one of the tools for beginning the test development process is the test blueprint um, and what it looks like is a table, a two-way table in which you have the columns uh, delineating the content, the specific content you would like to have. Uh, and in the first column is your content. In the second, third, and fourth column would be the taxonomy outcomes or taxonomy categories that that content will fit in. So if we wanted to do this test, for example, a high school social studies unit on the Civil War, we want to talk about alternative forms of government, we could do that at the knowledge level, or we could do that at the comparative reasoning level, or the classification reasoning level. And within each of these cells on the test, you have the number of questions that you would like on that test. So we would like nine questions on alternative forms of government at that knowledge level. We would only want one question for classification type of reasoning of alternative forms of government. For a total of 15 questions or 15 points, and as you can see, you total the points down the column and across each row. And down here in the corner, we have the total of 40 questions, which we're looking for on that final form of the test. Now, generally, we're going to want to generate more items, at least twice as many items on a test uh, for a test pool as you have on the final test so that we can have different forms of the test for makeups. Now, let me just stick with this for just a moment. I said that there were a total of 40 questions on this form of the test. Uh, if we develop a test, we want to develop twice as many questions to go in an item pool so that we can do our makeup tests and we can create new forms of a test. So we need to have some alignment of the types of questions and the content so that we can have that consistency. Now, choosing nine questions and five questions and one question in each one of these cells is a matter of your planning, how you teach the course, the kinds of expectations you have. So if you teach at the knowledge level you, uh, for, for a given amount of time, your, your test should reflect the kind of emphasis you have in your teaching. Uh, that's what we call the opportunity to learn and the opportunity to be assessed on what you learn. We want to try to link those things together in our students' uh, experience or in their own mind so that they can realize what priorities we place on our, on our content and on the types of things that we expect students to know. Let's take a look at a, uh, another table of specifications. This is for a weather unit in middle school science. Uh, you see over here in the first column we have the content, air pressure, wind, temperature, and so on. And we have the objectives, or what we might say that, that new taxonomy up here, knows, understands, interprets. And you can see that under each one of these different areas, now we have specified content uh, for each one of those areas. Now, the, one of the other points I want to make here is that the m more items you have in a specific area, that is, there are six items here which are on basic terms, six items on weather symbols. There are 30 on the influence of each factor on weather information. The, um, the level of reliability or of accuracy in a test is directly related to the number of items in each one of the sections. So as we look at each one of these sections of the targets that we're trying to assess, which ones do we have the most reliable information? The answer is for the ones where we have most questions. So you have to have a, an, a, a minimum number of questions, at least six or seven questions per content area or per category in order to get a reliable number of questions. Now we haven't actually calculated the reliability, but the level of reliability is related to the number of questions we have. The fewer questions we have, the less reliable the score. Thank you.